Well, just uh, as that news was breaking, we were speaking to Professor Marsha Langton of the University uh, of Melbourne, and this is what she had to say in terms of what the next steps need to be for the company. That will give the company room to now do what is the most important uh, course that they should take, and that is to find the right person to rebuild the internal culture of the company so that the company does not continue to uh, destroy important Aboriginal sacred sites and treat traditional owners, Aboriginal traditional owners and Australians in general with the contempt that Jean-Sebastien Jacques and Simone Niven have. So, of course, all of that is a big ask. And, Paul, we're seeing kind of just the first steps, right, in this case. Yes, that's right. Heads have rolled, Heidi, as we've been reporting. The CEO, Jean-Sebastien Jacques, is gone, although he will hang around until either a successor is appointed or until March the 31st next year, whichever of those is earlier. But the other two executives that were involved in this, uh, Chris Salisbury, who was uh, head of the iron ore business, he will leave at the end of the year. Uh, Ivan Vala will replace him. That's the managing director for Rail, Port and Core Services. And Simone Niven was the other executive, uh, group executive of corporate relations. She will also leave at the end of the year. Uh, just to recap what happened, uh, this was back in May that Rio was conducting blasts to expand one of its mines in Western Australia. But they did get permission to do it back in 2013, so the blasting was legal, but failed to take into account a study that was conducted a year later that really revealed just how significant that Dukang Gorge site was. It had rock shelters in it that had evidence in there by showing use of humans from more than 40,000 years ago, simple tools, uh, rock art and other artefacts as well. But uh, Rio disregarded that, conducted the blasting anyway, and was able to access an extra 8 million tonnes of iron ore as a result. Um, we've had a statement from Rio today saying what happened at Dukan was wrong. We're determined to ensure that the destruction of heritage sites of such exceptional significance never occurs again. And uh, Jean-Sebastien Jacques, the CEO, uh, paying for it with his job. Yeah, so we have seen the criticism on Rio Mount since then. How did their initial response fall short? Yeah, it was quite a reversal because it was just last month that the chairman was backing uh, the CEO. Um, but then uh, pressure came from all sorts of places. Uh, Australian Super, the largest pension fund, uh, wanted Rio to reconsider its decision because initially it just cut those bonus payments to uh, uh, the CEO and the executives by $3.5 million. So... Australian Super, the pension fund, didn't consider that was enough. Other pension funds backed that up. Uh, the Health Employers Superannuation Trust said that uh, it was concerned about the response. A number of shareholder advocacy groups were worried that uh, such a weak response was going to queer its pitch with the Western Australian government when it came to winning future approvals for mine expansions. And there was a heritage group as well saying, well, look, it was hardly a punishment, saving money on bonuses and uh, getting access to more iron ore. So uh, that's really resulted in the turnaround today.